In this video, I'm choosing a case for Mom's XBMC Media Player Raspberry Pi project. Hey, Don here. Well, I'm down to the part on my uh, Raspberry Pi XBMC kit project that uh, I'm ready to pick an enclosure for my Pi. And uh, of course, as uh, small as these things are, you can pick, and this has got the SD card in it, that, that sticks out a little and the uh, wireless uh, dongle wireless adapter sticks out a little then you've got your uh, connectors of course you want those to come out you want all of that to, well you don't need the only thing I don't care I don't necessarily want that it would be nice if you could change that without taking the cover off your project but it's not net mandatory in my case because I'm probably not going to be taking it in and out unless I just buy a bigger one or something. But of course with your audio and video connections and your dongle and your ethernet uh, you want to be able to get to that from the outside. So uh, you got two sides that need to be, oh and then you've got your uh, power. So the power could be just left plugged in all the time because that uh, that little uh, adapter that I bought, you know, it, it has a has a pa it has a little power plug, and then uh, you, it has a regular USB. Uh, I didn't think to get it out, but you, you've seen them, especially if you have a phone that uses them. Uh, the uh, that's actually the regular. What is that? Oh, that's the HDMI. That's the HDMI. The uh, micro USB. Uh, you could leave this plugged in and then just plug and unplug it. You could either unplug the USB from the power adapter in my case, or you could uh, unplug it from your this the eight, one ten volt socket. But um, anyway, <coughs> excuse me, I gotta have another drink. <coughs> I wanted to just show you all my different ideas and then what I settled on with the. Uh, or what I think I've settled on with the case. I'm pretty sure. Okay, but I'm going to have to move this that laptop thing down to my table so I can do that. So if I can get it to stay there. I think that'll be all right. Okay, this. You might have seen one of these. Actually, I never saw one until my neighbor gave, them, gave me three of them. W-Y-S-E. I've seen them, but I never saw them up close, you know. They're used in uh, businesses for uh, large networks they're just a they're just a terminal really they have uh, what's called wind term this one has had on it what's called wind term uh, XP version of XP fits on a uh, it's kind of cool this one uh, when I after I got it and uh, tried to boot it up it would boot up but try to boot up show a little it would show itself booting and then black out now it just blacks out so I think and I messed around with memory and all kinds of things, and I think the little video chip in it's gone bad. But this is a totally solid computer. It has a huge heat sink, uh, and uh, I, that was one of my first thoughts. You know, uh, maybe I could use that heat sink. Of course, it's bigger. The, uh, the aluminum contact is bigger. Won't even fit between the parts to go down to the pr uh, processor on the Pi. And the pie would really need to go somewhere like right up in here, just so that you could at least get to the uh, get to the uh, audio and video. And you'd, you'd, you could just leave. I mean, you couldn't get to the USB without taking the lid off. It's easy to get off. You could even leave the screws out if you wanted. But all in all, I decided it's really just too big. I want what one reason why I liked it is because it has it has a 12 volt brick. Let me get that. You've seen them just like a laptop. Uh, this is a 12 volt brick power supply, brick style. It plugs into the back of it, and um, then in here, 
inside it sends the power over to this is what which, which I would imagine is is basically a buck step down buck converter it it, it uh, I've tested the, the power coming this one does work right prop, what properly I've tested all of them and you get your three and a half and your five and a half volts and everything it oh it's not in here right now what, what I was gonna say earlier was cool is I never seen before it has an IDE SD card these are one gigahertz and they have uh, you can put up to 512 megabyte of RAM in them and I robbed the memory stick and I robbed the SD card out of it for the other ones that work and I put uh, puppy Linux on one and the other one I don't think I, I put some. I, I was trying to put uh, I tried real hard I tried to put uh, XBMC it wouldn't run on it just it just doesn't have enough video memory these are Intel based processors are not Atom processors and uh, I tried to uh, open the LMC I believe that's what the letters are uh, it wouldn't run on it so um, but any small distro that doesn't use much it's really I mean it's got a gig, one gig processor you can put 256 or 512 gigabyte of RAM a megabyte not gigabyte megabyte of RAM in it uh, it runs probably really good even it runs fine on 256 megabyte but on 512 it runs good and um, but you still can't play full screen YouTube videos and stuff like that on it. So it's the video processor that kills you with this thing. See, I, I had these before I ever uh, uh, got my uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, and applied to get this and ended up getting this uh, uh, the uh, wireless solution, the XPMC solution, you know, with the wireless keyboard and everything. Um, so I, I tried real hard to make these work and then I thought well they, this one would be the others would be good for something I actually the others I think what I really would like to do with them is make them a web server but uh, which they could do that just fine then again most of your distros are 512 to 2 gig you know for, uh, Linux web server distros I found some called uh, turnkey Linux that are very small and they run great on 256 megabyte of RAM it wouldn't it, you couldn't use it doing uh, you could do a very basic website on on 512 megabyte card. I mean, you can't really put a regular hard drive in them very easily. You could put a USB hard drive. Uh, of course, you could put USB sticks in them, but uh, I'm not interested in spending a bunch of money on them. You know, they're not really worth that to to me. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to show that and show you how cool it could be. I mean, you could use it for the Pi, and you could use the heatsink if you put it up here in the middle. One way, probably like that or that, probably like that, and you just have to get to, and, and you could uh, get a small piece of aluminum or, or copper uh, that's thick enough to let this sit down, because that that'll move. You can twist and turn on that, and that pipe you could turn it to where. It, you can't probably see very well how it's twisted, but um, it turns to go down to this motherboard. Well, if you had it out, of course, then you've got to figure out a way to mount this in here without shorting this out, because this this mother little motherboard's on risers, and of course they don't hit the pie at all. You might hit one screw. You're lucky. So anyway, you'd have to do some modifications. Some you'd have to spend a little time on it. Then you'd have a big old case that really didn't need all that. You don't need all that. Uh, the thing is, one thing I like about a bigger, little bit bigger case, no bigger than this for sure, is um, you know when you got something light. I'll show you my next thing. These right here. Seen these before? If you get it, get it still long enough. That. is the one of these HD TV tuners that we got so we have nothing but old TVs and uh, they are light enough that this cord and, and the video and the cables hooked up and want to drag it right off the TV now the reason I'm considering using these is because I got three of them that got messed up uh, they one one or two of them will make a little bit of a fuzzy signal, and one of them don't make a signal at all. 
Uh, but I tested the power supply. I've got two of these. I'll show you the one I got opened up. The one I would probably use for my case. Um, it's got a nice, this little window comes right out and it's got some white letters on it which you could uh, do whatever you wanted. You could put a piece of paper on it with the name you want to give it like uh, Don's Raz Pie or whatever. Oh, I hadn't thought of that before. Uh, uh, Don's XBMC Pie. That was what I was thinking of. Um, this little board in here There's your tuner and the processor, and I don't know enough to component test and repair electronics. I would like to learn, but I don't know enough, so I figure, you know, I could at least use the case. The power supply here, it works. Um, one, of the, the other one makes a nice steady, see I wrote it down here on the back for myself. They make, um, this one here, it makes three amps, 7.13 volts, and uh, it, it fluctuates between 2.25 and 3.3 amps. Oh, on the 2.17 volts, there's d two different uh, outputs on it. This one says it heats up, and I can even smell electronics now. Is that the power supply or is that the motherboard? I don't think I finished what I was saying a minute ago. The, what happened to these is we had a lightning strike hit the power lines coming to our house a few years ago, and we law and damaged some stuff, and uh, we lost a couple things. Only luckily, well, I, I try to keep everything important, you know, on protected uh, circuits and everything. And my computers were all okay. We lost one computer. All well, mine were fine. Um, lost a Dell computer and uh, these three of these got damaged but uh, this one I believe is the only one that just went black but it came down the power lines didn't hit the antenna uh, didn't hit the cable internet that's what we have internet we don't have cable TV just internet connection that's I don't want to spend that. I never have wanted to spend that much money for cable TV or uh, satellite or anything. So that's why I'm going so much trouble to... I watch... You know, I've already said before in other videos, I, I watch all my TV on uh, this laptop that I'm doing this video on. And I have XBMC on it, and I use, you know, the web browser. Uh, I use VLC to watch anything that I have on the drive itself. But... Uh, this is for my mom to be able to watch TV. She needs something simple to work. She can't. Well, I mean, she. If all you have is a TV, see, I used the monitor on the uh, laptop to be able to see. You know the words that I can't read on the TV because you got a regular old TV. You can't. You can make the text pretty big, but uh, you can't read it all. You know, it's pretty fuzzy. So. Um, I'm so used to navigating, I can do all right. And like I said, with this, I did it for a couple of years just on a desktop. And it started acting up so... Uh, well, actually, I started using this laptop already before that. But it started acting up. The motherboard wanted to go or something, so it's in the garage. But um, this I didn't go in. Okay, so if I take that motherboard out, I, I might just leave that power supply. I can put... Here's the back... I can, I'll have to drill me some holes, but see, I can put it over here in the corner, and I can have access to my uh, Ethernet, my USB, and my audio and video, and then I can leave the, uh, I can leave the, um, where'd it go? I can't see it. Here we go. Okay, I can leave the um, SD card just inside of there protected because I'm afraid it's that sticking out like that I'm afraid if it was it could get broke very easily sticks out so far off the board I mean if I did stick it out of a case I would only be sticking out just enough to grab it about a half inch or so so this thing you know the pie does heat up pretty good when it's running so I got to looking in my box of parts and uh, this one wouldn't fit either I don't think any of them would fit in this case. Well, with it down in there, 
you, it might fit because it would be all the way down in the bottom of it. Let's see if the lid will make me be able to tell some or tell it a little bit here. Let's see. Let's just pretend it was down in there. And I would have to. This is a off of an older AMD computer, like a 166 megahertz, I think. But this fan works perfectly. has a has the heat sink on it, built into it, or you know, it's not built into it, but it's screwed onto the heat sink. But uh, see, I could uh, I could actually get me some, you know, like three quarter inch thick pieces of. I have to be careful not to short things out, though. I'm kind of leery of doing that, but. If I could make it work safely, I would do it. I could actually let it set on that and build up, put a space, you know, put something to send that heat up to here, put some heat paste on it, and I'd have a proper heat sink fan. I have another one that I bought brand new that's for an AMD that doesn't fit the machine I expected it to fit. I'm rolling it around so fast. I bought that one brand new. It costed uh, four bucks or something. That's why it was so cheap. They didn't have a picture of it, so I should have known right then and there <coughs> that it was something odd. Of course, a regular fan would just fit in there. You could put it off to the side like that. Yeah, I think it would fit with the lid. <coughs> well, of course, with the power supply in there, you wouldn't to run it. But that would run, you know, that could run it at 7. I mean, a 12 volt fan would run just about the right speed. I don't think it may be quieter, you know, it wouldn't make so much noise on uh, 7 volts or so. <coughs> and then I can, like I was saying a minute ago, I can customize this a little bit and put my own words on there. It's, this thing focuses so slow. But it's semi translucent, smoky colored, you know. But so, I guess I'll say right now, this is the one I'm leaning towards the most. And, uh, it was my first thought, I think, or I don't know if that other one might have been my first thought, that, uh, that, uh, W by C box. And here's something I spent probably an hour looking at over and over. Ever seen one of these? You could tell if you'd focus, couldn't you? There it is. The trusty old cassette case. I see people on the internet always using those uh, Altoids tins. I don't even know where you get those things. That must not be real popular in Texas. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they'd be. They're great. But I don't have any. But this is almost exactly the right size. Let's see if I can get it. it. It throws me off when I try to go towards the camera. It's almost exactly the right size. And I sat there and twisted it every way I could think of. You could get to everything with it in there. You'd have to. But I'll tell you what. If you've ever cut around on this translucent plastic... It cracks and breaks so quickly and so easily, and it'll be so light that it'd never stay on the TV. I was settled on doing it at first, and then I realized how much trouble it would probably end up being. Now, I have an old broken remote that I bet you could put this thing in. It'll fit. You could leave your... Um, leave your uh, SD card inside and everything else would stick out with that fat side there I think my pie would fit in there but I think it would it, only be cool if you could figure out how to make the letters work with the pie and that would be above my head in, uh, tech, in uh, electronics <laughs> it'd be cool though of course, then you'd want a wireless video sending unit so that uh, this would be your uh, you'd, your uh, whole Pi unit. You know, then you'd need batteries. Of course, then that I think I showed this in another video. This thing is exactly the right voltage to run a Pi, if I remember right. 
Yeah, it is five volts. Uh, it's a rechargeable. What it is is you can plug it into your cell phone to quick charge your cell phone, but you could use it as a battery. My mom got it for free. It won't. Actually, I think it might work on her phone if you get the right wiring, but uh, it's not being used. So, oh, and uh, this is not what I was planning on using, although you could use it if you wanted to. This is what I was thinking about. You know what it is? It's all apart. It's one of those bug uh, repellers, those electronic bug repellers. And uh, if you were to take the little, that's the funkiest speaker I've ever seen. It quit making, uh, it started making noise. That's how come I know it's bad. And I think the light might have quit working in it too. Um, but it's just not really quite big enough. I kind of, I had thought, well, hey, you can use the power supply on it to run the pie. See, I was just thinking about all this before I ended up, I didn't want to spend 8 or $10 on a power supply. I'm cheap. And I decided it was best to get one. After all the reading I did about it, I decided it was best to get one that was uh, many people recommended that worked well with the Pi you know it didn't overpower you I figured that out you don't if you overpower it you'll blow it up you don't want to do that underpowered you can have all kinds of trouble with your USB dropping out and everything so I decided why I try to depend on an old power supply that uh, that you uh, don't know how what kind of shape it's in you know because we all know how cheap things are made these days. If there's some reason that the things aren't working quite right or aren't working at all, maybe it is the power supply. Just because it's putting out some voltage doesn't mean that it's working properly. So, is there anything else? I think that's it. Oh, the other thing I was going to mention, of course, Everybody's thought about putting what you could put inside of an old VCR, and I have a uh, I have a DVD VCR combo that I, my neighbor put on the curb and I brought in, <laughs> and uh, the DVD works pretty well. Sometimes it acts up and you got to kind of fast forward or rewind in the DVD, but the VCR don't work at all. So you know you could put it on that that area and you have lots of room to spare. And um, I'm not going to try to show it because it's over there stacked on top of the TV. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen it in the stack. And uh, that goes back, uh, that kind of brings up uh, another thing I don't know if I've ever mentioned. When I hooked this up to the TV in the living room, this Raspberry Pi, it, uh, it's going, the, the RCA on the TV is already being used by a DVD player. So, the the way I have uh, I have a Panasonic uh, DVD recorder with an HD tuner, one of the few they made, an E17, something like that. And um, E17, I believe it is. And uh, it is. Um, it is uncomfortable. There we go. Oh, got to be able to hear me. Okay. It's unco It's um. I love that thing. It ran great for a couple of years, and then it uh, uh, the DVD quit reading the drive. Uh, the, this, the DVD drive quit working. Quit reading, and uh, that's when I discovered the bad cap syndrome. I was looking things up, and I found uh, out about how that all goes, and. Uh, Thought maybe that there was some caps fixing to go out in it, but uh, uh, I ended up taking it in the living room when one of those uh, HD tuners died. It's for my mom to use and until she could get something else. Well, that's been at least two years now, and uh, she uh, 
it works fine. It, it, you, know, you can't play any DVDs or anything, record anything, but uh, that part of it works fine. So I thought about putting something. I've always kind of wanted, I wished I, I could figure out how to add a hard drive to that thing and make it a hard, a hard drive, you know, a PVR, I believe they call it. But uh, I really want to get it fixed like it's supposed to be. If I could find, uh, now I've finally decided if I could find a DVD drive for that thing, the original That'd be simple. That'd be easy to fix. Thought about maybe I could figure out how to put a, uh, a computer DVD drive in there. That would take some serious electronics skills that I don't have yet. Things I haven't learned yet. But anyway, you could put a Pi in it. Uh, but that's not what I was really going to do. It's got RCA inputs. Uh, composite video inputs. And analog audio inputs. So, that, since the uh, RCA inputs on the TV are already taken up by the DVD, what I have already done is it goes to an, an old VCR that works perfectly, but of course isn't good for much anymore, so for if you want to play a tape, it goes to that, and then goes on the RF to the TV. Well, uh, all I have to do is add this Pi onto that, D, that, that Panasonic DVD, uh, it go f go into its inputs. That makes it go on just another channel. This this would be simpler for mom to use. Uh, you just flip channels to get to it. You don't have to go grab the other remote uh, for the VCR and find out you know change because she can't remember how to do all that. She just leaves the TV on uh, channel three or four, whatever it is the VCR connects to. I can't remember. And uh, she never touches the VCR. It just stays on all the time. All she ever does is turn up the volume and change channels and turn on and off the uh, DVD. So if you if I add this Pi setup, the XBNC Pi, to uh, plug it into the back of the DVD, the Panasonic DVD uh, setup, then um, I think that'll be the simplest thing for her. It'll be simpler for me too. And since I can't use it anyway, there's no no worries as it being in in there. Uh, and some and and you know someday if she gets a new TV then this has DVI output so you can just switch to that go straight into her new TV so that's pretty cool because I had been kind of planning on building up an, an old computer one that's I need I've got a couple that'd be perfect if they just had more memory a couple that I fix stuff for my neighbors and stuff and then they give me old junk <laughs> in return <laughs> yeah, I work cheap. Uh, Need to learn how to work for some money, don't I? Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> that's my plan, and I'm probably not going to stick to it. I'll probably change it as I go. <laughs> so, um, I haven't uh, plugged this into that yet. All that yet. I've just used it in here on my TV and using a, another another. Oh yeah, I got another VCR that my neighbor put on the curb that same day. It works just fine, except for it doesn't. I don't think it has a. No, it doesn't have a remote. There wasn't a remote with it, but it worked. The whole thing works fine. It had a tape stuck in it, and I got it out, and it was fine. And I put a. I have you know. I cleaned the heads with a tape head cleaning tape. You know, and it's doing fine, but. Uh, Anyway, I brought it over here and put it on my little table and hooked it up to the computer. I wanted to make a screen video, you know, but that that old Net Pro Max doesn't have enough memory. Just can't do it. So anyway, uh, tried to make a video yesterday on the laptop, a uh, screencast video of me running my, my XBMC that's on the, there to compare it. And... <laughs> It kept filling up the hard. I only have 15 gig left on that drive, and it kept filling it up with the uh, the temporary files before I could get anything done. So I had to give up on that. So uh, unless I want to try to run my temp files over on the network to a bigger drive or something on one of my other computers, but uh, keep thinking there's another one I was going to show, but I guess not. I don't see anything. I got it all laying over here, and uh, no. That's it. Oh, there was something else I was going to mention. I have a couple of other bricks that my, was given to me. There's, now, one of those, the right size, 
if, if it had a little extra space in it, you could actually do that too and power it, you know. Like I have one out there that does three different voltages, five, three, and 18 or something. No, not 18. If it was 18, I'd be using it on a laptop. It's like 15. It's for an old, uh, it's for some sort of uh, HP printer. And it works fine. But uh, those things usually pack pretty tight, though. You, you probably have to gut one of those and use it, and then that would be a lot of work. They're hard. They're always hard to get apart. So I'm gonna go. The thing I like about this, uh, other than the fact that I've been hanging on to them, hoping I'd learn how to fix them. The thing I like about these is they're <coughs> is they're uh, plastic inside, and you don't have to worry about shortening. You can screw that. <coughs> <coughs> Any car there's dust, it kills me. <coughs> you can screw that. <coughs> you can screw your pie down in there anywhere you want to. You just drill holes straight into the. Uh, it does already have vent holes, that's why I was talking about putting a fan in it. It probably doesn't need it, but. Uh, but you can. Uh, that would not that'd be the opposite that's the top of it but you can screw it down in there uh, you might be able to use one of the there's tabs it's there's risers built-in risers in here I guess I should have took the motherboard out I don't know if I've ever taken it out yet but there are there's built-in risers in here and uh, there's four four at least four and you could uh, might hit one but the main thing is you want to get it to if you can get it to come out in these pre-existing holes, that'd be fantastic. I don't know if that would happen. Actually, it might. Those two are pretty close. You might work, be real lucky. Oh, I'm looking at it in the video now. And I'm thinking, hey, that's the thing to do. You just might get lucky enough to not have to drill holes. That'd be cool. So that makes me happier about that idea. And the DVI won't matter for me right now. Of course, you could always just plug it up and leave it plugged up. Even if you, well, yeah, later on I can plug it up and leave it plugged. Up. All I have to do is it's, it's easy to get the cover off of that. Be easy, uh, you know, the less connections that somebody can yank loose, the better. Power can stay plugged in, and they can come out here. I might have to turn this into a. These three might turn into a big slot or something. You know, just take out the plastic in between. So. Yeah, I'm starting to like that even more. And if the thing, if I decide it needs some cooling, I'll either take that old power supply out or I'll use it to run a fan. I would. Uh, my original idea was to use it to run the pie, but I don't trust them well enough. This one for sure because it fluctuates the most. I could use one of those other ones that has a steady, steady power coming out of it. But. Uh, um, that's my plan. Yeah, that's my new plan. That's my old new plan. New old plan. Okay. I've rambled for a while now. So, I hopefully I got uh, got some things figured out. And uh, I can always watch this video to remind myself of what I was going to do. Alright, thanks for watching. And uh, maybe I'll come back later. Uh with uh, some updates on getting that uh, put in a case. All right, this is Don. Check out my DWEB98 YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.